So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And 4 factorial is 4 times that, which is 24. But what's a half factorial? Well, it turns out there's a reasonable way to answer this question, and it involves this gamma function that we see up here, which turns out to have factorial values at positive integer inputs. And so it gives us a way to generalize what the factorial is. And we'll be able to use that in this video to get a reasonable answer for what a half factorial ought to be. And the answer is actually quite surprising. Welcome to today's video on Prof. Omar. So today we're interested in figuring out what a reasonable answer to the question of what is a half factorial should be. And we're going to be able to answer that by examining this gamma function. So the first thing we're going to do is prove that the gamma of a natural number n happens to have a value that looks like a factorial. So let's actually look at gamma of n. From the definition of gamma is the integral from of 0 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 e to the negative t dt. All right, so when we look at this integral, it looks kind of complicated because n could be a very large number, like 75. Um, so we'll integrate by parts to be able to try to do something. So we'll let u be t to the n minus 1 and v prime be e to the negative t. All right, so being careful with that infinity, uh, we get the, by integrating by parts, that this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the uh, evaluation from 0 to b of uv, so that's t to the n minus 1 times negative e to the negative t, that's the antiderivative of e to the negative t, minus the integral of u prime, which is n minus 1, t to the n minus 2, times v, which was e to the negative t times negative 1, so that negative we have becomes a plus. Okay, so let's take a look at this and evaluate. Uh, so the first piece, we have this t to the n minus 1, negative e to the negative t. Um, and when we plug in 0, it vanishes. Uh, but then we're left with negative b to the n minus 1, e to the negative b. And that goes to 0 as b goes to, let's just say as b goes to infinity. And the reason is because uh, that e to the negative b dominates b to the n uh, very much. So um, when we put it in a denominator, so that'll go to 0. Okay, so we're left just with the integral from 0 to infinity of n minus 1 times t to the n minus 2 times e to the negative t dt. If we bring that n minus 1 outside, we're left with an integral that looks like what we had, but the n minus 1 replaced with the n minus 2, so it's gamma of n minus 1. So now we have this cool relationship that gamma of n is n minus 1 times gamma n minus 1. If we check gamma of 1, gamma of 1 is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the 0, so there's no t contribution, e to the negative t dt, and that turns out to be 1. So if we use this inductively, 1 being 0 factorial, we see that gamma of n is actually n minus 1 factorial. Right, and we can see that because gamma of n is n minus 1 times gamma of n minus 1, which would be n minus 2 factorial inductively, giving us the n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so this gamma function actually gives us factorials for natural numbers n. Uh, that's great. It's off by like one um, index, but that's totally fine. That tells us that there's a natural interpretation for what gamma, for what half factorial it should be. It should be gamma of a of three halves, All right? It's like a factorial just off by one index. Okay, so to figure out what this reasonable interpretation of a half factorial is, we should compute gamma of three halves. So gamma of three halves is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the half e to the negative t dt. Now this seems like a kind of complicated integral, but to simplify things, let's not have rational powers of t by letting t be s squared. If we do that, uh, we get dt is 2s ds. And so by a substitution, we get that this integral that we're interested in, the half factorial, is the integral from 
0 to infinity of s times e to the negative s squared times 2s ds. Okay. Which is twice the integral from 0 to infinity of s squared e to the negative s squared ds. Great, so that's the thing that we're interested in computing. Um, let's actually take the part without the two involved uh, and do the computation of computing this uh, integral. So we want to um, separate this maybe in a way that's reasonable for us to see. Now a negative e to the negative s squared pairs well with an s uh, for finding an antiderivative. So we'll write this as s times s e to the negative s squared, and then integrate this by parts by letting v prime be s e to the negative s squared. Um, and then that will give us the evaluation from 0 to b as b goes to infinity of u times v. v is e to the negative s squared over 2 times negative 1. Uh, and then we have the other piece involved. Now that piece is minus 0 to infinity of u prime, which is 1, times v. And we already computed what v is. So we'll get a negative e to the negative s squared all over 2 ds. And the two negatives will make a positive that'll be beneficial later. OK, so we're left with computing this uh, part without the integral for a second. So we have the evaluation of s negative e to the negative s squared over 2 from 0 to b. When we plug in 0, that entire term vanishes because of the 0 that we have. Um, and then when we plug in b, uh, again, having e to the s squared in a denominator, when we, uh, if we take into account that negative exponent, we'll dominate that s, so we'll, that'll go to 0. OK, so when we plug things back in, then half factorial is going to be twice the thing that we're left with on the bottom, which has a half in the denominator. So it's really the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s squared ds. So that's the, the thing we want to compute, the integral from 0 to infinity of negative e to the negative s squared ds. The problem is there's no real easy way to compute this integral. It's kind of complicated if you try to do it by parts. Um, and also substitution will get you kind of nowhere. But this is kind of cool way to compute this integral. Let's square it. If you square it, you get the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s squared ds. And I'm going to multiply that by the same integral but with a different variable. So we'll use t instead. So the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared dt. Okay, so now we have an integral in two variables. They're independent of each other. So we're going to smash that into one double integral. Integral from 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity, of e to the negative s squared plus t squared dt ds, or ds dt. OK, so the benefit of doing this is if we actually look at the region of integration. And let's draw that region here. So we'll have an s-axis and a t-axis. Uh, and then s and t are going from 0 to infinity. So our region of integration is this positive quadrant. So we're going to fill that in here in a second. Filled in right there. Now we can think about this by changing from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. Our angle goes from the x-axis to the y-axis there, so we're going from 0 to pi over 4. And our radius goes from 0 to infinity. Now the reason to even do this is because the quantity s squared plus t squared is going to be r squared when we do the substitution. And our ds dt, the area form, turns into r dr d theta. That's how plural coordinates work. So we'll get r times e to the negative r squared. And that's a much more manageable integral to actually compute because we can do that um, using integration uh, by substitution. 
So again, we have the integral from zero to pi over two times the inner, or, uh, and then iterated the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative r squared times r dr d theta. Okay, this function is completely independent of theta, so we can take the theta uh, d theta out and write this as actually the product of two different integrals, one involving just theta and one involving just r. Okay, if we do that, our first integral is gonna look something like the following. It's gonna be the integral from zero to pi over two of d theta, and our second integral is gonna be the integral from zero to infinity of r e to the negative r squared dr. Okay, um, so the first integral is pi over two because we're integrating the function one. The second integral, when we take the antiderivative of this um, argument again, we did this actually earlier, uh, the antiderivative is uh, negative e to the negative r squared over two, and we're evaluating from uh, zero to infinity. And if you compute that, you actually will get a half. Okay, and so this integral turns out to be pi over four. So the square of a half factorial is pi over four, which means half factorial is the square root of that, which is the square root of pi all divided by two. So a cool surprising result for what a half factorial is using a natural extension of factorials in the continuous setting by introducing this gamma function.